Energy consumption and networking devices is a big number. Importantly, it's a growing big number. When the IEEE began investigating energy efficiency improvements in networking equipment, it was estimated roughly that $16 billion of energy consumption was being used in the U.S. alone in these devices, and that up to $450 million per year could be saved with a more efficient approach to networking. This is an increasingly important issue because of multiple trends that are increasing bandwidth and the energy required to push that bandwidth. For example, population growth. The world population has increased by 27% from 1990 to 2008, just an 18-year period. Secondly is the use habits of end users that have made technology more ubiquitous, such as in cell phones and mobile devices that require connectivity, as well as different habits, watching video streaming on demand and leveraging cloud services such as music on demand. These and other drivers have pushed energy consumption and networking devices to the next level. In just a four-year period, worldwide carbon dioxide footprint increased by 10%. It's important that we take a responsible approach to the technology deployment of this network and equipment. At VITES, we refer to this effort and the technologies that have resulted from the effort as EcoEthernet. Between generations, semiconductor vendors have reduced power in networking equipment by attacking voltage levels within circuit design. About three, four years ago, people started to take a different approach, looking at inefficient energy use in these designs. The Energy Star recommendations for small networking equipment attack these inefficiencies in three different areas. They reduce power based on cable reach, they reduce power on unused ports, and it uses a new standard from the IEEE referred to as 802.3AZ, Energy Efficient Ethernet. Energy Efficient Ethernet can reduce power consumption during periods of non-use in a data stream for a network. As an example, in a printer application in a typical commercial deployment, the printer may not be used for over 90% of the day. The original standard for gigabit Ethernet would require active communication with that printer almost constantly during the day at full power. Energy efficient Ethernet can reduce the power consumption for the networking function in that printer by up to 50 to 60 percent. We just spoke about a number of power reducing technologies for networking equipment. Two of these technologies, including the reduction of power when a port's not in use or cable-based reach, completely interact with existing market infrastructure. Triple E is also fully compliant, but it requires connectivity on both sides of the link. The IEEE, around 2006 and 7, began putting a work group together to address a standardized approach to reducing energy in these network deployments. That standard, 802.3AZ was ratified in September of 2010. It's a significant innovation that can reduce power consumption in these links by over 50% for a broad scope of applications. The current standard for energy efficient Ethernet supports speeds of 10, 100, 1000, and 10 gigabits per second. It's backwards compatible with existing networking infrastructure. Compatibility is an important consideration for energy efficient Ethernet. And a lot of effort is going into making sure that vendors are interoperable. Recently, six vendors, including Vitesse, participated in the Ethernet Alliance PlugFest held at the University of New Hampshire's UNH Labs to successfully demonstrate interoperability of the devices for this standard. Let me go the operating principles of uh, energy efficient Ethernet or Triple E for short. Uh, the fundamental principle of energy efficient Ethernet is to create a sleep state when there is no data to be transmitted so that power can be saved. In a, norm, uh, in a normal running system, 
a low power idle pulse is sent to put the transmitter chips of the system in an idle state. But let's say you have some data to be sent. Then you go ahead and send a normal idle pulse to wake up the transmitter chips. In order to reduce the need for buffering, fast reaction idle states uh, called refresh cycles are used in this implementation. Refresh cycles help uh, in the rapid retraining of the link, uh, thereby helping the uh, link to uh, come to a fully operational state in quick time. Finally, uh, there are means of uh, uh, reducing energy at even at 10 megabit per second speeds uh, using a standardized approach called 10 base TE. And all our new Vitus devices support energy efficient Ethernet or AAA. Energy efficient Ethernet has the largest impact as a standardized approach to saving power in networking systems. But these days, vendors have started finding uh, additional ways to save power. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, effort is put to save power even at the very beginning of the design. Uh, a lot of effort and time is put to save power uh, for each and every circuit of the design, uh, all the various DSP algorithms used in the design, and another areas of the design. Furthermore, there are standards available today uh, which are used to wake up uh, chips and even data linked layers. For example, Wake On LAN is one such standard that allows you to uh, wake computers remotely. Uh, here at Vitas, uh, we even pulse LEDs to control the brightness of LEDs, thereby saving power. The idea is the lower the LED intensity, the more the power saved is. In conclusion, the semiconductor industry has set a foundation for reducing power consumption in these networking devices by over 50% for most networking applications. That is a very significant reduction in power. And our next generation of products is already shipping with energy efficient ethernet. This is a technology that can reduce power consumption of broadband gateways, computers, consumer electronics, home automation equipment, IPA applications like computers and phones, switches, routers, storage, printers. The application breadth is enormous. And that 50% of reduction will make a huge difference in the world tomorrow.